I've met so many sports people and they love music. And, and so many sports people, and footballers now and rugby guys, they love their music. I think it's because they're passionate about it. I think if you're passionate about anything, it's good. But I've met a lot of sports people that want to be musicians and vice versa. And then I meet a lot of people from the movies who want to be sports people. I think there's an interlink, and Barry McGuigan was just saying to me earlier on, he thinks they're all interlinked. Because if people are passionate about something, I mean, I couldn't be good at sports, but I just love music. And that's my passion. And I'm not very good at it myself. I sell it. I'm a salesman. I think the 2012 Olympics is going to encourage young people in all the small villages and towns all around Northern Ireland and England and Scotland and Wales, everywhere, just to take up sport and just to be passionate. And I think you'll probably find that in the months after the Olympics, you'll have a lot of new people joining boxing clubs and tennis clubs and swimming clubs and stuff. I think it's just going to encourage everyone to get into sports and get fit. And it's going to help all the communities. Well, the Inspermark is actually quite a rare thing because uh, never before at any Olympic Games has there been an opportunity for uh, communities, not for profit organisations in the country hosting the game, to have a direct right of association with the Games and deliver Olympic projects in their own towns and villages. Uh, so the Inspiremark was established by London 2012 in agreement with IOC to give third party uh, project organisers the opportunity to deliver those sort of Olympic projects for their own communities and for the public to get involved in an experience close to them. Well I'm responsible for the culture programme so um, principally within the culture programme since 2008 we've been delivering a sort of uh, a relatively high quality level approach to the Inspiremark program and delivering at least four projects a year. And we have uh, 12 and a few more on the way. And there are many other projects with libraries in uh, Northern Ireland with the Verbal Arts Centre in Derry. Um, and we're doing a project di called Digital Discoveries with the Department of Environment. Uh, so the list actually goes on and covers quite a broad range of activity uh, and, and uh, inspiring so the young people to get involved in culture in its broadest sense not specifically just the art forms, but also uh, culture related activity to do with the environment, uh, amongst other things. My project, the title is The Screaming Silence of the Wind, and basically uh, it was because of uh, a comment that a blind lady made after I came back from Australia that inspired me to think differently about the work that I was currently doing. I had. Uh, ignored, for the want of a better word, a complete section of audience by being, I suppose, arrogant, uh, by assuming that everybody could look and see my work. The blind lady asked if she could touch the paintings. That was inspirational for me to, f all of a sudden, I had a new uh, area to look at. Since that comment, I've been up to Iceland and discovered a new material uh, that I'm using to create the new paintings. Basically what it involves is using oil paint and fish leather. Fish leather is a very nice, soft, tactile material that I think will uh, fit in nicely with the landscape work I'm doing.